the Mackenzie River. For hundreds of years, this great waterway has carried hunters and trappers, explorers and traders into the heart of Canada's Northland. The river also brought the surveyors and geologists who came to map out the mineral wealth of this remote region. Some of them returned with reports of natural oil seepages along the Mackenzie. On the bank of the river just south of the Arctic Circle is the settlement of Norman Wells. Imperial Oil and its subsidiary, SO Resources Canada Limited, have been producing and refining oil here since the 1920s. Norman Wells is about 1,500 kilometers north of Edmonton. The settlement grew up here entirely as a result of oil field development. Here, the river is frozen for seven months of the year. Winter temperatures often fall to 40 degrees below zero. The settlement is accessible only by air, water, or winter ice road. For over 60 years, Norman Wells Oil supplied only the local northern market, while most of the oil field remained untapped. In 1981, Esso received government approval to expand its oil field operation at Norman Wells. The Norman Wells expansion project was designed to develop the main part of the oil reservoir that lies directly under the river. Six artificial islands were constructed to serve as drilling and production platforms. A central processing plant was built to separate oil, gas and water produced from the reservoir. Gathering pipelines were laid to connect all parts of the oil field to the processing plant. Over 160 new wells were drilled. This increased production to more than eight times its previous level. The crude oil would feed into a pipeline to Alberta. The project would take over five years to complete. Throughout the planning and construction stages, SO staff consulted with regional groups and kept them up to date on the project. A northern employment office was set up at Norman Wells. You've considered uh, other applications in addition to this one, eh? Yes, we have uh, six other applications that we have considered and we have them all arranged to be coming in for an interview next week. So this guy is one guy you really want to key in on? Yes. Employment officers publicized job opportunities throughout the north and developed counseling and orientation programs. ESO committed itself and its contractors to hire as many northerners as possible for this project. Island construction began in January of 1983. Four of the six islands were built that year. Trenches were dug through the ice so that rock could be dumped onto the riverbed. Before construction began, rock had been blasted, sorted and stockpiled at the local quarry.
Rock was hauled to the island sites once the river ice was thick enough to safely support the loaded trucks. of rock was built up from the riverbed. During the summer, these rock rings would be completed and then filled in with sand to form the islands. In spite of the bitterly cold weather, several phases of construction had to be completed in winter. All stations, uh, this is Frontier. At four o'clock this afternoon, Northern Loram will commence blasting operations at pipeline trench number two. Frontier radio out. In a few places, blasting was needed to excavate the underwater trenches in which pipelines would be laid. On the mainland, a foundation for the central processing plant was constructed. The plant itself was prefabricated in Edmonton and would be shipped north in modules by truck and river barge. This far north, the winter days are very short. By mid-afternoon, the sun is already beginning to set. Yet work continued around the clock. summer of construction, the workforce at Norman Wells peaked at 1,400 people. Modular camps were brought in by river barge to house the workers. Even the provision of everyday amenities had to be planned months in advance. Camps had to be staffed and employees fed. All fresh food had to be flown in. The population of Norman Wells would more than double during the project, and this put increased demands on community services. SO people worked closely with residents to find ways to ease the impact of development. The company helped set up recreation programs and facilities that could be used by all members of the community. <laughs> Additional roads were built to separate heavy construction vehicles from local community traffic. The project generated many business opportunities for northern groups. Security services for the oil field were contracted to the Fort Franklin Dene Band. A couple from Fort Good Hope received support in setting up a laundry service, and they were soon receiving business from other sectors of the community. The Dene Band from Fort Franklin purchased equipment and took on the waste disposal contract. Business opportunities were publicized through a northern business coordinator, and northern firms were encouraged to bid on contracts. Over 200 northern businesses participated in the project.
As soon as the ice was gone, construction work resumed on the islands. First, the outer rock rings had to be completed. To supply the rock, quarry operations went on day and night for several months. was dumped into a grizzly to be sorted. Each phase of construction required rock of a particular size. Fifty ton trucks hauled the rock to the dock site. carried the rock to the island sites. Load by load, the outer rings were completed. Dredges pumped sand from the river bottom to form the core of each island. The island rings were lined with filter cloth to retain the sand. Gradually, the rock rings were filled in and the islands began to rise above the water. These islands were built to serve as drilling platforms to provide access to the oil-bearing formation that lies directly under the river. From these islands, approximately half of all the new wells would be drilled. The rest were located on the mainland and on the two large natural islands in the river. Drilling and completion work went on continuously during the construction phase of the project. spring, freight destined for Norman Wells was stockpiled at Hay River, the head of navigation for the Mackenzie River. Since there are no summer roads into Norman Wells, heavy supplies go in by water. In May, the first prefabricated modules for the central processing plant were loaded onto barges to await shipment north. They had been built in Edmonton and trucked to Hay River. Now they were to be shipped almost a thousand kilometers by river barge. At Norman Wells, the finishing touches were put on the foundation for the processing plant before the barges arrived. Shale fill around the pilings ensures adequate drainage for the foundation. A new dock had been built to handle the offloading of the prefabricated plant. 
The first modules arrived in mid-June. A total of 64 modules were moved north from Edmonton. The processing plant has three main functions. It separates oil, gas, and water that is piped in from the production wells. It treats water that will be injected into the oil reservoir, and it generates electricity. Natural gas recovered at the plant is used as fuel for both the production facilities and the community. It will also provide high-pressure lift for most of the production wells. One of the benefits of the project is the improved conservation and use of natural gas. Sections of the prefabricated plant continued to arrive all summer long. Most of the 4,000 cubic meters of oil produced daily at Norman Wells will enter a pipeline for transport to Alberta. Oil will still be sent to the local refinery. Its output will remain unchanged. From this plant, a pipeline 32 centimeters in diameter was constructed by Interprovincial Pipeline. The line runs almost 900 kilometers from Norman Wells to Zama, Alberta. To connect all parts of the oil field to the processing plant, a system of local pipelines was installed. One of the most difficult tasks was to pull the pipelines across the river to connect the islands with the mainland. First, the pipelines were welded together on shore. Pipelines were assembled into groups of pipes running parallel to each other. These bundles include separate lines to carry crude oil, gas, water, and an electrical cable. An underwater trench was dug so the pipes would be buried well below the riverbed. This was to protect them from ice scouring and erosion. Finally, the pipelines were pulled across the river with a powerful winch. vice-like grips alternately pulled on the wire rope with a movement that resembles a hand-over-hand -hand action. The pipes are concrete coated to protect them and to weigh them down. Altogether, about 130 kilometers of pipe were laid in 30 kilometers of trenches.
remote controlled shutdown capability has been provided for all production lines in the oil field. By late summer, the first islands were nearing completion. Once the sand core of each island was completed, all sides were virtually armor-plated with large rocks. Environmental protection was central to all the planning for the Norman Wells project. The islands were designed to withstand the most severe ice and flood conditions during spring breakup. The top of each island is 11 meters above the average summer water level and almost two meters higher than the maximum flood levels. An impermeable plastic liner covering the entire surface of each island will retain surface drainage. Protective cellars were installed on each island to house up to 20 wellheads. Because all facilities were carefully designed and constructed, a major oil spill is highly unlikely. Nevertheless, equipment is in place for containing and recovering any spilled oil, and the operating staff is trained in emergency response. Each year, government and community representatives are invited to watch one of the regular oil spill cleanup drills. In August of 1983, a drilling rig was moved onto the first man-made island to be completed. All the islands were named by northern school children. This one is called Decho, which means Great River. Once a rig is erected on an island, it can be skidded from one wellhead to the next without being dismantled. The installation of this rig was a special event because the rig is owned by Sheta Drilling Limited. Sheta Drilling is a joint venture company formed by the Métis and Dene Development Corporations and Esso Resources. Participation in this project is providing employment, training and management experience for northern native people. in the fall of 1983.
each island, wells were drilled to reach out under the river at various angles. This technique, called directional drilling, allows access to every part of the oil reservoir under the river. of the new wells are used to inject water into the oil reservoir. This technique, called water flooding, is used to maintain pressure in the reservoir and to force oil through the porous rock to the producing wells. Because of government restrictions, the wells were not completed until after the first spring breakup around the islands. were designed to withstand the forces of this great northern river. Long upstream slopes prevent ice from riding over the islands by causing it to break apart. Five-ton concrete blocks shield the exposed upstream corners from ice and waves. The project will provide Canada with an additional 4,000 cubic meters of high-quality light crude oil per day at a time when domestic supply is a major concern. On behalf of the government of the Northwest Territories and all Northerners, I am pleased and honored to be here today participating in the opening ceremonies of the Norman Wells Oilfill Expansion and Pipeline Project. It's the first major hydrocarbon development in the north to reach production stage, and the first crude oil from the north to enter southern markets. I believe this project demonstrates that by working together, we can develop the resources of the north in a socially responsible way, with sensitivity for the environment, and with economic benefits for all Canadians, including a fair share for Northerners. We estimate expenditures with Northern businesses at close to $100 million, and Northern employment has averaged about 45% of the total construction workforce. And of course, Northerners will continue to share in opportunities in the operation phase of this oil field well into the future. <laughs> 